the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, President says that the country is in discussion with sovereign bondholders and hopes to reach a quick deal as early as next week. Prices of standard petrol, super petrol and super diesel gets reduced, while the National Transport Commission announces a 5% reduction in bus fares starting from midnight today. Stock market closes Monday with substantial losses as major indices drops further. And Britain's economy expands by 0.7% in the first quarter of the year, surpassing the initial estimates of 0.6% growth. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. President Ranil Wickremesinghe said at a public rally yesterday that Sri Lanka is in discussions with sovereign bondholders and hopes to reach a quick deal as early as next week. He mentioned that after signing bilateral MOUs, bondholders' representatives began talks with the government. Initially, he expected the discussions to take about a month, but they have been progressing effectively and he anticipates a successful conclusion by next week. Vikram Singh noted that once the agreement is finalized, it will be taken along with other two agreements for consideration. He mentioned that he informed Harsha De Silva, the chairman of the Committee of Public Finance, about this plan. However, Vikram Singh indicated that he might not be able to provide full details of the Paris Club and China debt deals to the parliament within the week. He stated that disclosing partial information could create issues with private creditors. He assured that he would address Parliament with a comprehensive speech and after the committee's review and report, the agreements would be put to a vote. He emphasised the importance of Parliament voting on these agreements to demonstrate acceptance to the world. Sri Lanka state-run Ceylon Petroleum Corporation said it has cut the price of standard petrol, super petrol and super diesel with effect from midnight yesterday. Meanwhile, the National Transport Commission announced that bus fares will be reduced by 5.07% from midnight today. Octane 92 petrol was cut by 11 rupees to 344 rupees a litre. Octane 95 petrol was cut by 41 rupees to 379 rupees. Super diesel was cut by 22 rupees to 355 rupees a liter. Standard diesel was kept unchanged at 317 rupees a liter. Kerosene was also kept unchanged at 202 rupees a liter. Sinopec Lanka said it was following the Sinon Petroleum Corporation. Speaking to the nightly business report, energy advisor Dr. Tilak Siembalapitiya questioned the fuel price reduction amidst rising global crude oil prices. He emphasized the need of authorities to enhance transparency regarding the price reduction formulas they employ. Four weeks, international crude oil prices have been gradually going up. The exchange rate, dollar, rupee exchange rate, has also been gradually going up. So when everything is on upward movement, there cannot be any secret in any formula that the prices locally also have to go up. So what makes the petrol prices to go down is a puzzle for us. So therefore, as this country also did in year 2002, 3, 4, publish the formula, publish the sources of information, and publish the data you input to the formula, and publish the output of the formula. Of course, if the formula gives 354 rupees for a litre, we don't mind you making it 350 for convenience in the transactions. But then that can also be transparently published. So when that publication is not there, people have to think that the prices are being reduced owing to the imminent election period coming up. Because similar things have had have happened in the past. Meanwhile, the National Transport Commission announced that bus fares will be reduced by 5.07% from midnight today. The NTC communicated this to the public in a special media briefing held today afternoon. According to the chairman of the National Transport Commission, there will be a 2 rupees reduction in the minimum bus fare. Chairman said thereby the minimum bus fare would be reduced from rupees 30 to 28 rupees. 
Last week, the Lanka Private Bus Owners Association also announced that there will be a 5% reduction in the bus fare following a decision which was taken during a meeting between the Lanka Private Bus Owners Association and the Transport Ministry officials. Official data shows that Sri Lanka's Finance Ministry has maintained a positive cash balance of 542.3 billion rupees by the end of April 2024, only slightly down from 599.5 billion at the end of December. The Finance Ministry had received revenues of 1,205.1 billion from taxes, fees and other revenues, 7.9% above target, while total cash outflows were 1,420.5 billion rupees which was less than expected coming in at 93.5% of the target. Capital payments were slightly higher than target at 188 billion rupees. The cash deficit to be financed was 403.4 billion rupees, less than 603.7 billion rupees planned. The deficit was financed with 796.5 billion rupees of gross borrowings, down from 959.9 billion rupees last year, and debt repayments were 444.4 billion rupees, higher than expected. Net borrowings at 352.1 billion rupees was less than 690 billion expected. The government ended up with 542.3 billion rupees cash surplus by April. This usually corresponds to the balance in the current account of state banks. By the end of April 2023, Sri Lanka had small 4.9 billion rupees deficit, which was turned into a surplus by 599.5 billion rupees by the end of 2023. <laughs> The Central Bank of Sri Lanka wishes to announce the implementation of the Banking Amendment Act No. 24 of 2024, effective from the 15th of June. These amendments were formulated with a view to further strengthening the legal and regulatory framework applicable for licensed commercial banks and licensed specialized banks to enhance the resilience of the banking sector of Sri Lanka. The Banking Act, which provides for the introduction and operation of a procedure for the licensing of persons carrying on banking business and regulation and control of matters related to the business of banking, was lastly amended in 2006. Therefore, recent amendments were formulated considering the developments in the current regulatory framework, economic and market developments, the best practices and international standards adopted on prudential requirements to the context of the local banking sector. In addition, the observations and comments of the relevant stakeholders, the banking sector, panel of auditors conducting audits of banks, other regulators and authorities were also considered as appropriate when drafting the amendments to the Banking Act. How did the stock market perform in the beginning of the week? Let's see that right after this short break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a downturn at the start of this week, closing today's trading session with losses. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index hit new lows, continuing the negative trend that began last week. To get insights into today's trading activities, let's connect with Brendan Fernando from SC Securities. The All Share Price Index closed at 12,085 with a decline of 59 points and the S&P SL20 Index closed at 3,568 with a decline of 19 points. The turnover was recorded at 686.9 million rupees with a share volume of 32.4 million where the highest turnover was recorded by John Case Holdings, Haley's and People's Leasing and Finance. The top five gainers were SMB Leasing, Industrial Asphalt, Nation Lanka Finance, Tess Agro and UB Finance. Volume-wise, highest trade of counters were Nation Lanka Finance, People's Leasing Finance, Browns Investments, Kodagula Plantations and Maravilla Resorts. There were two crossings recorded today, of which John Kills Holdings showing a turnover of 102 million and Haley's with a turnover of 52.5 million. After starting the week on a negative trajectory, what can we expect from the stock market in the coming days? We pose that question to Ranjan Ranathunga joining us from First Capital Holdings. The All Share Price Index fell by 0.9% last week to 12,144, mainly due to the uncertainties hovering around the finalization of the debt restructuring agreement. The negative sentiment surrounding the equities trickled down to today as well, where the All Share Price Index came down by more than 60 points while the S&P SL20 index came down by more than 20 points. Going forward, 
we at First Capital expect CS to continue its lethargic sentiment caused by uncertainty surrounding the debt restructuring discussions. Moreover, Sri Lanka President Ranil Krasinga is also expected to announce the uh, deal regarding the bilateral debt discussions at the parliament tomorrow, which is also highly awaited by the investors in today's market. Furthermore, the stock market is also expected to benefit from limited alternative investments as investments in treasury instruments continue to remain weak means the limited upside on trading prices. Meanwhile, the CCPI inflation for the month of June stood at 1.9%, recording an increase from 0.9% recorded in May. The growth in uh, inflation was mainly due to the increase in food prices, while non-food prices stayed steady. Going forward, with the expected illicit tariff reduction coming into play from this month onwards, together with the reduction in fuel prices, we expect non-food inflation to tore down towards the next month as well. Furthermore, with the consolidation phase happening in the stock market, we expect the phase to continue towards this month, this week as well, where uh, we expect investors to take fundamental questions on fundamental discounted shares. Furthermore, the upcoming uh, earnings season is also expected to uh, positively affect uh, the sentiment in the equity markets, where earnings are expected to recover in tandem with the recovery in the economy. Furthermore, we have also seen steady improvement in uh, manufacturing PMI as well as construction PMI during the quarter, where we expect these positive results to also to trickle down towards corporate earnings in the coming months as well. Thank you. Gold prices weakened in Asian trade today, taking limited support from increased expectations of U.S. interest rate cuts as traders awaited more cues from the Federal Reserve and U.S. economy this week. Spot gold fell slightly to $2,325.74 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in August fell 0.2% to $2,336.05 an ounce. The yellow metal remained squarely within a trading range established through most of June, also making little headway as the dollar sank. Gold marks little gains as SEPT rate cuts bets increase. Sentiment towards metal markets, especially gold, remained strained even as traders increased their expectations for a September rate cut following PCE price index data from last week. The dollar index sank over 0.2% today, extending losses from the prior session. Oil prices rose today, helped by expected peak summer consumption and OPEC plus production cuts, though gains were capped by rising output from other producers and the potential for economic volatility resulting from a changing political landscape. Brent crude futures rose 42 cents or 0.5 percent to $85.42 a barrel, while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures were up 44 cents or 0.53 percent at $81.90. Both contracts gained about 6% in June, with Brent settling above $85 a barrel in the past two weeks after OPEC and its allies, a group known as OPEC Plus, extended most of its deep oil output cuts well into 2025. That led analysts to forecast supply deficits in the third quarter as transportation and demand for air conditioning during the summer ate into fuel stockpiles. The Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated further against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to last week. According to the People's Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have increased from 300 rupees and 8 cents to 300 rupees and 47 cents, and from 310 rupees and 24 cents to 310 rupees and 65 cents, respectively. At commercial bank, the buying rate of the US dollar has increased from 299 rupees and 86 cents to 300 rupees and 11 cents, while the selling rate has also increased from 309 rupees and 75 cents to 310 rupees. Now let's observe how the rupee behaved against other global currencies.
commercial break now. News from the corporate world coming on the other side. Welcome back to the United Business Report. The National Gem and Jewelry Authority, in collaboration with the Lanka Gem Miners and Traders Association and various regional gem and jewelry associations, successfully hosted the Ratnapura International Gem and Jewelry Show from June 29th to July 1st, 2024. Held at the Grand Silver Ray Hotel premises in Ratnapura, this three day event provided a vibrant platform for gem and jewelry industrialists. The exhibition kicked off on the 29th under the patronage of Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana. The exhibition featured 80 stalls comprising both local and international gem and jewellery traders. A large number of local and international buyers also participated in this event. The exhibition showcased a diverse array of products across several categories, including gems, jewellery tools and equipment, value-added gems and jewellery and small and medium businesses. The event drew participation from licensed traders in the gems and jewellery industry, ranging from small to medium-scale enterprises, providing them with a valuable opportunity to exhibit their products and explore new business prospects. Attendees included a large number of both local and international buyers, fostering significant business interactions and collaborations. The exhibition ran daily from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., attracting a steady stream of visitors and creating a bustling atmosphere conducive to networking and business growth. Reaching an important milestone of promoting the destination across the globe, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, in collaboration with Airport Aviation Services and Sri Lankan Airlines, welcomed the one millionth tourist arrival to Sri Lanka on 29th this Saturday. The lucky couple to complete this much-anticipated visit of the year was Paul and Patricia Rowe from Ireland, who travelled to Sri Lanka via UL504 from London. Being solo travellers, this is considered as their first visit to Sri Lanka. They were invited to mark their special arrival by lighting the traditional oil lamp and were garlanded by the Tourism Information Centre officials and were very much delighted with the amazing hospitality of the Sri Lankans and also the unexpected special welcome. A special dance performance was also arranged to entertain the guests. They also joined in by cutting a special cake to mark the occasion receiving special souvenirs on their special visit. Along with its milestone, Sri Lanka tourism is gaining its momentum of taking Sri Lanka's uniqueness as a treasure trove among travel destinations across the world. This visit indicates a positive outlook for Sri Lanka in receiving its future tourist arrivals. As Sri Lanka tourism is getting closer to its set target of reaching over 2 million tourist arrivals for this year, this can be considered as another successful result of the promotional efforts of Sri Lanka tourism, also boosting up the revenue as a third foreign exchange earner in the country. The world's leading new energy vehicles manufacturer, BYD, through its passenger vehicle authorized distributor, JKCG Auto, officially unveiled the BYD NEVs, which are BYD pure electric vehicles in Sri Lanka at the EV Motor Show in 2024, marking a revolutionary step towards fostering groundbreaking technology in sustainable transport. The chief guest for the exhibition, which was held at the BMICH, was the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Dinesh Gunavardhana, who unveiled the BYD new energy vehicles to the public. The new energy vehicle fleet unveiled at Motor Show includes BYD Pure Electric Vehicles, which are the luxury sedan BYD Seal, renowned for its sleek design, ultra-long range of up to 650 kilometers, and acceleration time of 3.8 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. The BYD Atto 3, a versatile and family-friendly SUV that stands out for its spacious interior, advanced safety features and an impressive range of up to 480 kilometers, together with the BYD Dolphin, a compact yet powerful vehicle known for its agility and efficiency, offering a range of up to 410 kilometers and a swift acceleration time of 7.9 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. Consolidating its commitment to establishing Sri Lanka as a hub for new energy vehicles in the region, JKCG Auto also revealed ambitious plans to open showrooms for BYD automobiles 
and EV enthusiasts across the nation. The first flagship showroom in Colombo is scheduled to be open to the public in the coming weeks, which will provide visitors an immersive experience highlighting the advanced features and benefits of these cutting-edge vehicles. Charita Subasinghe, president of the retail sector at JKCG, stated that after being in the business sector for a considerable time, the company conducted an in-depth study to identify unique and differentiated services they could offer their stakeholders. This analysis led them to become the authorized distributor of this brand, enhancing their service offerings. I think uh, if if you're any industry, for it to be uh, uh, sustainable, it has to ensure that the different stakeholders can get some benefit from that industry. So when John Keyes got into this industry, it was the first time ever that we got into such an industry despite our being in the country for over 150 years of existence, is that we looked at what the different stakeholders will benefit from this industry. And firstly, if you look at from the government revenue and expenditure point of view, I'm sure everyone is aware that one of our biggest import expenditure is in fuel, fossil fuel imports. We spend about six billion uh, per annum in US dollars. And if when the country opens, if the country opens with EV vehicles becoming the center point of the import of vehicles, I think we will be able to minimize on the increase in that expenditure. Import expenditure is one aspect, so that is the benefit the government in terms of the fiscal policy that would, the government would gain. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Most Asian stocks moved in a flat to low range today as investors digested mixed cues on Chinese business activity while uncertainty over US interest rates remained in play. Regional markets took weak cues from a negative close on Wall Street on Friday as quarter-end profit-taking largely offset some increased expectations for rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. China's Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indices shed 0.5% and 0.2% respectively after government and private purchasing managers index readings gave differing cues on the economy. Broader Asian markets retreated amid some uncertainty over China. Australia's ASX 200 fell 0.4% while South Korea's Cosby was flat. Japan's Nikkei 225 and Topics indices rose about 0.3% and 0.4% respectively. Britain's economy grew more quickly than previously thought in the first three months of this year, expanding by 0.7% from the previous quarter, above an initial estimate of 0.6% growth. Britain's economy performed better than previously thought at the start of this year. It expanded 0.7% in the first three months from the previous quarter, according to official figures out Friday. That was up on initial estimates. The numbers come less than a week before the UK general election, where polls put the opposition Labour Party well ahead of the ruling Conservatives. Friday's data confirms Britain's economy exited a shallow recession at the start of the year, but the overall growth picture is weak. First quarter GDP was just 0.3% higher than a year earlier. Britain's economy has struggled since the last national election four and a half years ago. It was hurt by the pandemic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and post-Brexit trade frictions. Overall, the economy in the first quarter of 2024 was 1.8% larger than in the final quarter of 2019, back before the health crisis. That made it the weakest performer after Germany, among the world's seven largest advanced economies. Britain's growth in the first quarter was its fastest since the final quarter of 2021, however, and the second quarter looked solid too. Last week, Britain's central bank estimated GDP would expand by 0.5% in the April to June period. But it expects this to be a rebound from last year's weakness rather than the start of a period of strong growth. Well, that concludes our first bulletin for the week. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest news from the Business Globe. Until then, I'm Sina Mayadunne. Have a good night.